Hello, Dr. Noob here again. So today I would like to uh, make my second part of the Talmaps tutorial. The reason why I didn't it in one tutorial is just because of the huge amount of time it would have taken. People get bored with a 40 minutes tutorial. So I decided to make, uh, well, the one to create. Uh, the tile maps and the second one to uh, show you the colli colliders that you can use and also how you can tweak around. So there are three different methods, well there are more but I think there are three, three different methods that you can use as a beginner and um, yes let's get started. Okay, let's start with the basics. Um, I want to show you how the whole collision thing works. So what you definitely need to have in here is a collision, whatever collision you want to add. I will show you three methods later, as uh, already mentioned. Uh, but besides of that, how does it really work? So we have here our player, which will be um, spawned here under MV level start. So this character will be spawned in here and then he goes down because of the gravity that you have added to the character. Now the character itself, um, if you remember right, uh, just for testing reasons, we had here the character level bounds. And if you remember for testing, we had here the constraint. So means if he touches the top, the left, right or the bottom, he, the character can just not move further. Uh, in my case, I like the character to be killed. So it means if he touches this yellow line in here, then the character will be killed and he, he will or she will be respawned uh, on the same um, point again spawn point if you want to call it like that and uh, now the rest um, the corgi engine is working with layers when you create your character remember you have the corgi controller uh, script in it and here yes exactly here here you have the collisions so um he says that if you have a platform mask, which would be in this case, this platform mask, then the layer should be platforms. So the Corgi engine automatically detects the collision. He checks, is it on the layer platforms? And then you can walk on that collision that you will add. Um, you could change it. Let's say if you want to make your own layers with your own names or different complexity, it's not an issue. You can just uh, create new layers, add them in here and change it. You see, we have, uh, well, it's very easy. Platforms for platforms, moving platforms for moving platforms and so on. And now if you go here to your platforms grid, you see we have the layers and you will find exactly the same layers as you saw before. We have the one-way platforms, the moving platforms, the platforms and so on. So in our case we would like to have it on the platforms. So if I add now a collision in here under these platforms, then, well, then it should work. Now let me show you the three different methods to create a collision. The first method is actually the most uh, obvious one, but it's not a very flexible one. Uh, let me show you that. It's very easy. You just create a 2D box collider. So here it is and here you can edit it. So you make it as big, as thick, as small as you want. And that's it. So if we click on play, then our character is moving exactly on top of that collision. Again, this collision is because it's on the layer platforms. Uh, let's say we would have that on default, just to show you that. 
then it shouldn't be possible. Yeah, look at that. It doesn't touch this collision at all. So let's put that back to platforms. Okay, so um, let's say you would like to add another collation. Well, then you would add another collation and you would again do the same game as before. So do I recommend this method? No, I don't. Uh, really, I wouldn't do that. I have seen some tutorials, even my first 2D games I did uh, was done this way. Uh, I personally think it's it's not a easy way to do the collisions, or I should put it better, it's not a flexible one. Because maybe you design a level and when you test it out you finally think, oh no, I need maybe a wall in here or something like that. And you need to add and add these box colliders and you would later not even really differentiate them very well. Um, maybe I would recommend it if you have just one easy level, maybe a puzzle platformer where you don't really have much platformer elements in it, maybe? I don't know. Well, it's your choice. I wouldn't really recommend it again but it's very resource friendly uh, you don't have any uh, strange behaviors sometimes when you create a character an enemy he moves left and right and so on those things normally has not happened to me when i create it this way but still i don't recommend that let's go for the next method so the second method you can use and this is much better than uh, the last one is if you add a tile map collider 2d so the moment you click here on the tile map collider 2d you see he will create a collider for each of your tile maps uh, which is great because now you can definitely start and design your level freely and you will have this collision in here so if I click play then there is no issue you see we can walk on that and yes we have not added the jump to our character but you see it's working so it's working um, when do I recommend this kind of collisions well I think I recommend that only if you are having one-way platforms because uh, for the normal platform you don't want to have as much as so many colliders you see that those are each one of them are, are a collider and you see so we have a lot of collisions or colliders which um, we really don't use and will never use but are still there and I don't think that's an elegant way to do that. But for the one-way platforms that you jump on it and uh, you can then, um, yeah, well, you know what a one-way platform is, uh, then that's a great way to do it. Which brings us to the third way to go. And our third way is to have something special in the 2D tile map collider. You see he has here something which is called used by composite which means if you put composite collider 2D on it uh, then he automatically adds the rigid body 2D which I personally always go for a static in here and um, you have the composite collider 2d which can be triggered or activated if you use here the used by composite and now look how it will change duck and that's it now he understands that he will only take these corners in here which is wonderful and uh, well let's test that out And yes, it works. 
So, um, what is the benefit? Well, the benefit is clear. You are using less resources for uh, your collisions. You don't have as many. The downside, and this is why I recommended you before that you use that for the one-way platforms, is if for some reason maybe a force is applied and you go, you somehow make it through this collision, then you are stuck within these walls here. So that's why I said for the one-way platforms, I recommend that you don't have the composite because then you can maybe jump up or something like that and save you from there. Uh, but for the platforms, I think it's good enough if you have here the, um, the composite collider. Um, yes, those are the three methods. Now let's go for something else. Uh, maybe, just maybe, let's say you have something else. Maybe you have another uh, collision type. Uh, in my case, my, all my tile maps uh, that I received from Lugual are square and there is no issues. But sometimes you get some uh, tiles which are maybe, uh, um, you know, a little bit um, like a stairs or something like that. And your character gets stuck. Um, sadly, I really don't have now a good example for that. But in case you are facing that, uh, the Composite Collider also offers you something like an offset distance. And you can, you see, you can smooth it out. It's not really necessary in my case, but that's okay. And you have also the edge radius, which makes it... Um, uh, if it's too rough, you can also make something like 0 0.01 or something like that, or 0 0.01. And then if you go near, you see he makes something like a thick layer in there. Uh, it That helped me for my first game, actually, just if you face the same issue. Good. Uh, well, those were all a little bit, uh, let's say, best case scenarios. Let's do something else in here, make it a little bit more complicated for my people who has not everything as smooth as I have. So I have here this extra tile. So if I go in there, you see there are some little spikes on it. So it's a rough area, it's not really a smooth area. So what happens if we import that? Let's do that. We go here to the inspector, we tell him that it's 16 pixels per unit. We say point no filter and none. We apply that and Sorry, we need also to go here to our sprite editor. Now, uh, in here, we, as we know, we can go and make this uh, slice by cell size. So now it's uh, 16 by 16, oops, by 16 pixel. So I slice that, okay. So now if we slice that, um, well, let's apply that. Let me show you that. And we can close that and we can move that in here. We go here to tiles and import them very well. So, um, let me delete so let's delete here a little bit so now let's say I would like to
have that in here. So let's play that. So I go down and if I if I zoom it in you will see I'm really not touching the ground. It's uh, like walking on those spikes. So in my case it would mean that my collision is wrong because I really want it or I really want her or him walk on this part here and not on the spikes. So how can you do that? Let me show you that. Well first of all let's delete that here again and delete that again. So it's like it never happened and to make sure we can go here to the extra tile 0 to 8 and delete it from there too. Great. So then let's go back uh, where we were before when we went into the sprite editor. So we are here under the sprite editor and if you look at it uh, you have here the slice that we have already used but we have already sliced it that was okay but here you have the custom physics shape and it it's good if it's snapping because then let me show you that then you can start and create this one here so now he's ignoring the spikes and let's go to the next one and it happens exactly the same just correcting a little bit and then we go to the next one and do exactly the same uh, yes yes let's make the rest too Okay, so now we have for each one, if we click on it, we should have them. Oh, no, this one was wrong. Let's correct that. And uh, well, there is no easy way um, to make a whole collision to it. You really need to go for each one of those slices. And then we can do apply and do the same again. So it means we put that into our tile mo palette. We go here under assets and tiles. We import those. And now we can start drawing them. Okay, and now even if we go here to platforms, we already see where the green line is and sorry, and you see the collision is right, which means if we click on play, we should be now walking really, you see, where we want it. So the spikes are ignored. Well, in this case, maybe it's not spikes, maybe it's some grass or something like that, which you don't want uh, well, the, the character to walk on. Great, that was it for the tile map collisions. If you have any question or a suggestion what I should add in here, 
uh, please let me know. I will be a little bit away on vacation, so I think it will take some time until you see my next tutorial. Anyhow, thank you very much and enjoy the summer. Cheers!